Well, you guys got another video here for you on how to speed up your PC performance with this one setting. Now we're talking about XMP. A lot of people don't even know XMP exists and they go and buy a PC or they build a PC and they never enable it. But how much performance does it actually uh, give you? Well, XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. You can see I've already got my uh, PC on here and I'll show you how to set this up and how to look out for certain pitfalls when building your PC when inserting memory just like this one here. So what you've got to be careful of, you've got to make sure that your memory is compatible with the motherboard. If you don't know whether your memory is compatible with a board, you can always check the manufacturer's website. I'll show you that a little bit later on. You can check here on the settings here. It will tell you exactly what the voltage is for this and what the speed is for this memory and whether it is uh, XMP uh, compatible. So what we need to do here is get this right memory and then check the compatibility list on our motherboard to make sure that we can enable it. This way it will stop you having issues like uh, black screen of death and other issues like that when you turn XMP on. So let's head over to the website and take a look at the compatibility list where you can check your motherboard against the RAM that you're looking to buy. So what this is going to do here is this motherboard inside this machine is a Mag B550M Bazooka. You want to go over to their website and check the support. Now yours will be a different motherboard, but you can do the same thing and go over to this little area under support that says compatibility. Down here, you're going to go CPU, memory, or compatible devices. We're going to check the memory here and it's important that you look for your particular type of memory that you're thinking of buying to make sure it's compatible with that motherboard. Now, it's important that you buy the right type of memory because if you don't, you can end up with issues like XMP issues where it's not going to be able to uh, enable XMP or you may also run into some sort of uh, crashing or black screen of death. So do a search for your memory. You only have to search for the name and it will give you the list for all those particular types of memory that you're looking at using on your system. I'm going to type in a data because that's the RAM that I have installed on this system. And if you go down here, you're going to get the model number, exactly what should be on that little label that I showed you earlier on. And you want to look for that inside this list here. And if it is there, then you know that memory is compatible with that board. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that your RAM won't work with that motherboard or XMP won't work if it's not on this list. It just means you're going to be running a bigger risk of it not being compatible. Next, you can head over to the drivers and download. Now, if you've got a very a modern motherboard, the very latest released, and you've got the super fast memory, which is the latest uh, releases of memory, sometimes the motherboards aren't quite up to date and you can update the BIOS to make it compatible with that memory. Sometimes they update these on a regular basis, especially on new motherboards. And this way you can be assured that your memory will be added to that list, especially if it's a well-known brand. So try to stick with well-known brands rather than these unknown Chinese types that you don't know or never heard of before because you can run into issues. You can check the user manual on uh, which slots to populate on your motherboard. And you can also uh, check on here for the types of speeds that the motherboard will accept and what it will go up to. So always check the motherboard to make sure you get the right type of speed for your particular board. For instance, this board can accept a maximum of 4,400 megahertz RAM. So me trying to buy faster RAM than this, say for instance, 5,000 megahertz and hope that it's going to step back to 4,400 megahertz, then I could be asking for trouble it might not work at all and you could run into major problems so try to stay within what that motherboard can handle so once you enable the xmp profile this is going to improve both frequency timings and also increase the performance on your system so we've gone into the bios now and you can see here we do have two xmp profiles you need to make sure you select the right profile for your memory Otherwise, your system may not boot properly. So make sure you check what the speeds differences are for each of these profiles. I'll show you that in a second. But once you get into your BIOS, you'll be able to enable the XMP profile for that machine. So I've got uh, the 
XMP profile set on XMP profile one. And when I go into the advanced mode here and I go down to the memory options here, you'll be able to see it's running at 3600 megahertz. Now without the uh, XMP profile on, the RAM is only going to run at 2,666 megahertz. But with it on, we can go to the profile speed of that memory of 3,600 megahertz. We can also get the timings of 18, 20, 20, and 42, which is set in that profile for that memory. So what can you expect to gain from enabling XMP? What can you gain in frames per second and also other types of performances by enabling the XMP profile? Well, that's going to vary from system to system, and it's going to be hard to show you exactly what you can expect to get from your PC. Now, don't go and expect something like an extra 100 frames per second by enabling it, because that is not going to happen. This is all about incremental improvements when you enable features like this. So it's always worth uh, taking that into account. Now, if we go to the overclock settings here and take a look at the memory settings here for the memory frequency and things like that, you'll see that we've got uh, the XMP profile enabled here. So this is where you can check all your settings and stuff inside uh, your BIOS. So you can see down here, we've got all of the information about the RAM here. So you can see 2666 is the uh, speed which it comes out the factory. When you enable the profile, it gives you the 3600 megahertz. And this may change from memory to memory depending on what speed you buy and what sort of memory you buy. It would all come down to what the profile is set for on that um, memory itself. So you could end up with lower voltage, higher voltage, depending on what type of memory. This memory has 1.35 volts. Uh, for this particular types of memory and you can see here we have the two profiles uh, set here so these are the two different profiles and they are both different settings now when you enable one of these uh, you may not be able to get the profile that you're trying to put on because it might be too much for the memory that you are using and then it will just uh, crash and it won't work and you won't be able to boot and this is a common problem when people start enabling profiles you need to check the uh, ratings and speeds of those profiles if they have more than one profile on that motherboard. So you can check out all the specs inside your BIOS here. You can see the XMP profile here is set to profile one. I can change this to profile two. If that was the correct profile, I would use profile two. So always check which profile is recommended for your particular type of RAM. So the CAS latency for this memory is CL18. And of course, CL16 is going to be a lot better, but it's more expensive. But we got the CL18 on here, which is the CAS latency 18. Now, of course, you can overclock your memory, but that is out of the scope of this video. But basically, it means that I could push this memory even further. And I might even be able to get 4000 uh, megahertz out of this RAM. Every RAM is different. Some overclock better than others. You may need to put a bit more voltage through. Uh, you may not. It just depends on what RAM you use, but we'll cover that in another video. But you can see here, we're running XMP on this and we're not overclocking the RAM uh, any higher than what it's set for in that profile. Now, XMP does give you a performance boost, no matter what people tell you, it is a performance boost nevertheless. It's just not what you're gonna probably expect. You're not gonna go from 30 frames per second on gaming up to 100 frames per second by enabling XMP. It doesn't work that way. It's just incremental little performance boosts, and you might not see a major difference. It might be as much as 10 frames, maybe 15. It will vary from PC to PC. So when it comes down to XMP profiles, you will get small little improvements on your system. Don't expect major big jumps in performance when you're enabling it. Uh, but it will give you better performance across the board when you're using uh, these settings. So for people that try to do benchmarks with XMP on and XMP off, you're not going to see a big difference in FPS, but you will see a difference in the way your machine works and performance. So bear that in mind when uh, you are enabling XMP profiles. So let me know in the comment section below whether you enable XMP or not and whether you've seen any sort of improvement with it being on or off. I'll be interested to read your comments. Anyway, 
that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a special shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. And a special shout out for GeoSam and also Welsh Tony One, Albert Houston, and Gary Belts who have joined my tier three YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. You guys are awesome. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.